back everyone thank you for joining me along this continuing adventure we've got some updates and some things to catch up on and uh, to bring you up to where the car's at and to the problem I'm currently having so let's go ahead and just kind of dig right into it and see what we can figure out all right the first thing to talk about I think is gonna be our fuel so we have the inlet uh, that comes from the tank uh, going into the fuel pressure regulator We've got the uh, to carburetor white one uh, that goes over to the carburetor. And then uh, our return hose, it, it normally had the blue tag on it, but we've changed that around a bit because the return hose now, well, it returns to the gas tank, you know. Um, it's on the outside of the car now, but uh, this is actually going to work uh, for now at least we've got of course other things to kind of get to but that'll keep the uh the gas recirculating so we don't run out of it immediately because uh, the car's a little bit of a gas guzzler if uh, you're not returning the fuel as far as being under the car goes uh our next step is going to be to do an oil change which uh, is a fairly straightforward endeavor thankfully um, all it requires is uh, the removal of the oil pan drain bolt here um, and then all the old oil in the pan will drain out I remembered that uh, a comment was left that uh, the oil should be changed uh, because there was some uh, smoky ick coming out of one of the uh, uh, the valve covers um, and I couldn't agree with you more because we also had uh, a ton of uh, well it hadn't been changed since 2019 and it also has probably had a ton of like gas and uh, other products that shouldn't be in your oil there so we'll get that changed um, and uh, get back to you one of the other issues I got asked about was uh, timing and how to do it and I'm excited and I know you are because we are going to get to the timing today so uh, let's do the part under the car first and then we'll move to a standing position which will uh, be nicer all right I've got a uh, handy dandy tire marker pin uh, it's white and it uh, puts out a like it's like a white highlighter but it sticks on stuff really well um, because the timing uh, marks on the harmonic balancer which are the big wheel uh, or attached to the big wheel that turns around since those are pretty much uh, gone through the lack uh, through the through the days of time uh, we're gonna mark it with a uh, a white line to try and uh, help make that more visible when we get to the timing as you can see I have put a big old fat white mark on uh, the top dead center line uh, which is zero degrees I don't know if you can see that zero there but uh, there is one um, and this vehicle should uh, be probably timed at around 10 degrees before top dead center so we'll get all, we'll get to that soon but first uh, we're gonna mark, do another mark, which will be 10 degrees before top dead center. So this thing rotates uh, uh, around and we want to make sure we put the mark um, uh, before top dead center. So since this thing rotates, uh, well, let's turn it around, there we go. All right, now you're looking at it from kind of the front of the car. So since this thing rotates counterclockwise um, it's gonna be going that way so if we want 10 degrees before top dead center we're going to find the 10 on the harmonic balancer which uh, there's gonna be two of them there's gonna be one after top dead center and then one before top dead center and you can tell that it's before because well there's a B TC before top dead center and uh, uh, I don't know if you can see that but there's one that's uh, ATC after top dead center so I'm gonna make a second mark at the pin line because we want uh, to time this about 
10 degrees before top dead center with the distributor. So, okay, so I've got these two lines on here now, um, and I'm going to use this to help time the car. So let's go ahead, get it started, get out from under the car, and get a timing light. I guess I might as well show you how uh, easy and or difficult it is to start a car. So um, we're in the car and uh, I'm going to pump the gas twice. I don't know. May need a little help because uh, kind of an old car come on come on baby might need to replace a belt or something too uh. just kind of gently Maybe I don't know how to start this car. I am pretty low on gas. That should hopefully be working. I mean... I installed it, how could it not be? Come on, baby. The squealing at least has gone away, which, you know, is nice for everybody involved in this process. I'm gonna keep this going for a little bit and uh, when the engine warms up it should be able to run on its own all right so we've got the car uh, running and idling now uh, which you need to have if you're gonna do timing um, I also removed the vacuum advance and plugged that off from the distributor because uh, you don't want that when you're trying to do timing now the timing light I got uh, this one here um, it looks a little complicated, but it's really not too bad. you got a positive and a negative that you put on the battery terminal. And then you also have, uh, whatever this is. Uh, and you put this on your number one spark plug wire as close to the spark plug as you can. And what that'll do is every time a current passes through here, it'll cause the light to flash. So you'll get to be able to time it. So let's give that a shot. So now that I have the timing light hooked up to the battery and I've got that thing clamped around. Right, good morning. I, I've got that thing clamped around the number one spark plug. Uh, this is going to be flashing uh, every time a spark goes through. So now what we do is we point it down at our harmonic balancer and we will see those two marks um, next to the uh, next to that, the timing pointer, which is that piece of metal. Well, you're gonna have to take my word for it. I can't get you closer. But I actually have that right at 10 degrees, top dead center. So, uh, kind of nailed it already. Um, so if I wanted to change it, you just turn, you just turn the distributor either left or right. Um, to advance or retard the timing, but I've actually got this, uh, I kind of nailed it, so we're actually good on that. Okay, uh, now that we've got it timed pretty well, it's idling a little bit high, but, uh, you know, that's where we're at. So, uh, we can now test the alternator. There's two ways that you can do that. I'll show you both of them. One of them involves your multimeter, 
Um, and the other one uh, is a little bit simpler. So one way to test if your alternator is working is to remove your uh, positive cable. If the alternator is working, the engine will still have enough gas to run. All right, alternator is working. Secondly, um, you can switch this over to your direct current setting um, and see if you're maintaining voltage on your battery. So we'll put the negative on the negative and the positive on the positive. And we are at 14 volts and holding steady. So we can tell that our alternator is working. However, I just noticed uh, one of our pulleys isn't spinning. Uh, that's not good. It's the smog pump, that very useful item. Uh, I blasted it with some WD-40 uh, to try and uh, loosen it up. And I'm taking a screwdriver, taking a screwdriver in. This thing is really hot, by the way, don't touch that. Uh, this is also hot because that's the heater hose. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm trying to get in there and uh, twist it. Uh, but uh, God, it's not, it's not wanting to turn. <sighs> Why did that happen? Oh dear. <sighs> well, uh, was not anticipating that pulley not working. Uh, it's to the smog pump, so maybe I could take it off. In fact, it looks like it just goes from the smog pump to the uh, AC, which uh, I don't need that right now. I will later though, will. Um, and then a belt tensioner and then around the crank, uh, the big one in the middle. Uh, the accessories, the uh, alternator, power steering pump, and the water pump are all powered by a secondary belt. So maybe I just take that belt off for now. But anyway, uh, I wanted to show you this genius bracketry we set up. Um, I'm not 100% sure how this goes, but I took the uh, throttle linkage and stuck it on there. Um, took the transmission or the uh, throttle from the pedal, the yellow one, and stuck it on there. And then uh, kind of just, you know, combined two springs that came with it. I'm not, you know, that's probably not right, but, you know, we're still working on that. And on top of it, we do also have a little bit of a uh, transmission issue that we're going to have to try and figure out, but that's okay. I guess another issue is there's just so much crap in here that I would like to get rid of and make this engine bay look a little cleaner. Like the smog pump, I don't think you need that thing, and if you take that out, you get to take all of this out, and like it's a just a bunch of stuff. And then I'd like to figure out how to do the uh, distributor wires a little bit better, but like, yeah, I'd, I'd like to, to take all of this out and you know, clean up this whole sort of fender wall here. Um, and I don't know. That's, that seems like an extra project that doesn't need to happen in order to get the car to run right now. So, uh, but we're so close. I mean, like we got the car running, the alternator's working. Uh, it's timed somewhat right, maybe. Um, so close. All right, okay, it's had some time to cool down and let that WD-40 kind of hopefully get in there and loosen her up so we can maybe turn her, because if we can't get this fog uh, pump, oh, yep, that's not, that's not turning at all, guys. Dang it. Okay, well... I guess I can just take the belt off then. Okay, we got it running. Um, I got a real cheap tachometer um, to try and help figure out uh, if we're 
idling near where we need to be. So, pretty simple. The green wire goes to the tachometer, 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 how do you say it? I don't know. Uh, the black wire goes to a ground, and then the red wire goes to a positive, and if you touch it on a positive, it should start to give you some, uh, some numbers. As you can see, I've taken the belt off, so we don't need to worry about that, so touching that to the positive. Terminal. Okay, we can see that we're idling it around. It's hard to do this uh, like this, but um, we're idling it around 800 to 900 rotations per minute, which. Uh, is uh, kind of where we want to be. Anyway, so we're at about 800 to 900, so our tune job should have worked out well. So one of the things that we think that we noticed was a bit of a, uh, a uh, fuel leak near the carburetor. So a way to check for that is to take some starting fluid or some brake fluid spray it where you think there might be uh, a leak and if there is it'll rev up really high so let's give that a shot and see what happens And I think it's safe to assume that the back of that carburetor uh, with the gasket is leaking. So we'll have to address that at some point, either trying a new gasket or potentially, uh, as many of you would like, to getting a four barrel carburetor. So we'll think on that. Since I was having a bit of trouble making the connection stay uh, permanent, I just uh, hooked in these little wire testers to uh, to the the, the the terminals and then connected them to the battery. So now we've got a good solid flow and we should be able to, to see how that uh, tach tachometer is going. Tachometer. What? I don't think it's supposed to be jumping up. Ah, there you go. Okay, so... They need to... To bring that up just a tip up, up. It's considering where it wants to be. Alright, sitting about 750 now. So when it's idling the way it wants to be, it seems okay. It is a bit loud and shaky. Um, I think that's because when we took the smog pump off down there that wasn't spinning, and we took a lot of this other uh, bracket try that came with it off, uh, it left a couple of big holes that uh, make a lot of noise. So we're gonna have to figure out how to plug those up and what to do with those. But you know, it's uh, kind of moving. We can keep it steady. We let it idle here for about 10 minutes. It kind of smoothed out a little bit. I think that vacuum leak is going to have to be fixed somehow. Um, but it's holding pretty steady at uh, about 900 RPM uh, when it's not vacuum leak messed up. So I think that's pretty good. Um, that little thing was pretty easy to install and if you don't have a tachometer and need to know how fast it's going, it's about 20 bucks online. Uh, but we do have some other issues. So the gas gauge does work, which is, you know, really nice, but we're having trouble with the, uh, the shifter machine. So if I put it in 
neutral. Then that one is going backwards. But if I have the drum on this, that one doesn't move and that other one spins that direction. So that's a bit of an issue. Um, I can, I can put it into drive and the wheel will spin forward. You can see the speedometer even works a bit. Uh, but like it's not, um, it's not like hitting on the right, cause I, it's not hitting on the right things here. So I don't know why that's not working. And like, I can go down one more. That's as far down as that'll go. And I think uh, the transmission feels that that is overdrive. Uh, the speedometer also works on it. Uh, it's just, that is something I have no idea what to do, but the wheels do spin. So the transmission does seem to work. I have gotten under the car and played with the shift linkage and like it clicks when it's moving, uh, you know, back and forth. But I just like don't know why it's not catching on the, uh, uh, the shifter up here. And if I try and like put it back into park, it gets a terrible grinding noise. I'll show you. So trying to put it back into park gets you a horrible noise. I've got my foot on the brake and I've got the this thing pulled all the way back, but yeah, it's just, it's not supposed to do that. So I don't know. We got the, the old uh, smog pump machine off because uh, we were trying to fix it. Uh, so we could put it back on and we took it apart, but uh, the pulley portion is just not Gonna rotate we tried uh, pulling the back off and uh, cleaning it out with brake cleaner um, But it just uh, It's just not gonna work. So we are going to have to figure out another way to do that, but I think I have an idea Moving along with our theme of turning this uh, 84 LTD into a sleeper performance car. Uh, we have a performance bracket try uh, for the air pump, smog pump thing. So that should fit down in there and allow us to uh, kind of just bolt on and then put the belt back on so we can use the standard size belt. Uh, this thing was a little pricey. It's about uh, $100. So uh, be committed if you're going to do it. But I'm hoping that this will go in uh, more easily than not. All right. So putting it in the location of the old one uh, should be a relatively simple process. And then this belt should then go around just like normal. So let's see if we can't get this bad boy bolted on. <sighs> okay. Uh, we have the new fancy dancy pulley installed and like any good mechanic we had an extra part left over this spacer which i believe goes there but it's just about uh a millimeter or two too long so it wouldn't fit but that's okay we got this thing tightened down pretty good and even got the belt back around it so uh Hoping the AC works. Let's start her up and see what happens. One thing that is cool is that if you look at the bin, you can actually tell a lot about your cars. Now this American Beauty here is so cool. I'd love to see where she was made. Oh no. Oh no. Boys, she's connected. 
Canadian. You can tell by the two at the front of the VIN code. It indicates that this car was manufactured in Canada. But, you know, we won't hold that against her, I guess. Well, everyone, it's uh, running. Uh, I still have some other issues that I try and figure out, such as the transmission, why that's not working. Um, I have some uh, new differential fluid for the rear to replace that. I don't know when or if that's ever been replaced. So I figured I could get in there and clean that. And then uh, I got a new transmission uh, oil filter, uh, a gasket, and uh, transmission uh, fluid. So we can replace that and maybe that'll bring the transmission around. I'm really happy that the pulley appears to be working well. Uh, not a single squeak from the boat, knock on wood. So that's really good. Um, so we still have some things to do on this. I, I really, out and the brakes, of course, but I really don't know how to figure out that transmission, like why it's not shifting or going into gear. So that is something I am going to have to work on. But thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, if you have any thoughts or questions on it, please feel free to leave them down in the comments. Uh, leave, a, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and uh, we'll see you next time. Until then, have a good one.